stands out. Okay.
not gonna work. <clears throat> Where's my bone folder?
Hey everyone, Stephanie, and I'm back, and we're going to continue working on the cover of the album. I still haven't placed my centerpiece yet. I'm going to hold off doing that until I'm uh, after I install my pages, I think. Um, so it'll show up in this video, but the sequence I'm going to do it in is I'm going to add the last piece um, after the album is complete, because I'll be turning it upside down and moving it around, and I don't want to put the extra wear and tear on the cover. So I have selected this pattern, which is the same as what's behind here. I am using two of the background packs, and that's why I had two of these prints. So I'm going to keep it simple. Um, I want to try to keep this album relatively simple from a pattern perspective, because the focus should really be on the photos, right? And that's true with any album, but especially true in a wedding album. So um, this was trimmed down to fit the cover. Um, and then I've got the white outline, white, white, so it, it looks nice and inset. Now, as far as this goes, I think I'm gonna wrap it around the side. Um, so you have an option here to trim this down and continue the pattern over or do a half wrap, which is what I'm planning on doing. So I'm gonna start by adding some tape, and, and this was just clipped in, in place to, first of all, verify that I had enough paper, and I do, um, to get it to start training it. So the next thing I, can, I need to do is verify I have it in the right orientation, and I do not. So I need to turn it over. <laughs> I didn't notice that earlier. So these are going down, and on the cover, that point is here. So I need to turn it over, no big deal, like so. And so I'm gonna start by, I was trying to train it a little by having it clipped. So I'm gonna start by adding, I'm just gonna put a, a little crease right there so I know where to add my tape. So I'm gonna add tape um, all here and up to this section. And then this is gonna be the flat part here. So I'm going to do glue. So I'm gonna come a good two inches past um, the hinge area of the spine. Let's go ahead and just get started with that. And again, my rule of thumb is if it's an interactive component or sitting on a, a part of the album that moves like the hinge and the spine, um, I use tape. And then if it's a static element, no scores or anything like that that you're dealing with, then I use glue. And that's why I'm gonna do a little bit of both here. Okay, I'm using 5 8 inch tape. And this is right about where my square line is, so I'm gonna add one more piece of tape. There we go. Then the rest I'll cover with glue. Let's burnish all this into place. back in okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove part of uh, the score tape that's gonna cover the centerpiece and I'm gonna leave the other two pieces intact so if I don't get it placed perfectly to start with it'll be very easy for me to remove it so here's about where the score line is right about here so I'm gonna remove these two once I get those two cemented in place then I'll come back through with my hook tool and remove some more tape. So I'm gonna start by doing these two strips. Okay, now what I'm looking for is I'm trying to center it top to bottom, verify the orientation with the cover, get a nice even border. Sorry, when I'm concentrating, I lose my language. Got a little bit of a bow right there. So twice now, I've done it too high, so I'm gonna peel that back. I had a little bump in it. Oh, that's much better, much easier to see. 
Hopefully I'm not bouncing the camera around too much because it's resting on the stand one side and then my the front of it is actually resting on me. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now before I go too much further, I'm going to wrap this around and see if there's a chance that I might need to trim it. And it looks like I do need to trim it a little bit. And now is the time to do that. Or do I? Yeah, ever so slightly. So I think I need to take off about a 16th of an inch. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take another piece of tape out just to get it laying down nice and secure. So as, when I flip it over, I'm probably just gonna trim it with um, my metal ruler. And I'm gonna come around the edge. So once I come around this corner, then I know really where my trim will need to be. So I'm holding it away from the front cover right now. And as I've mentioned before, when you do a wrap, you don't want it completely closed and you don't want it completely open. You want it at about a 45 degree angle. So that's right in between open and closed, the halfway point. And that way your paper can stretch. But if you do it when it's completely flat, it'll buckle when you open it. And we're trying to avoid both of those things. It looks like so far so good. Okay, yeah, I am gonna need to trim it just a little bit. Like I said, about a 16th of an inch. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> I'm just eyeballing it. After a while, you can just see it. I shifted. but not quite. So now for the rest of it, I think I'm just gonna put a little pencil mark so I know where, where to cut. And if I have it right, yeah, I need to cut a little more on this end. And I think that's gonna do it. We shall see. too crooked. Oh, I did it. I made it crooked right there at the end. But I have to live with it. My ruler slid, so I actually took off a little more on the end than I intended to, but I can live with it. I'll take out the rest of the tape, add some glue, and then we'll get uh, we'll be done with Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm ready to get started on the inside liners. And I do need to actually give this a second to completely dry. But while it's drying, uh, we can take a look at um, what we're doing here. So I'll let that dry for a second. So 
we're going to do two pockets, one on the left and one on the right. And they're going to go like so. And then we're going to have a flap to keep them closed. And I especially wanted to have a large pocket in this album because there's so many sentiments and cards that you want to um, save as part of your wedding. I wanted to make sure there was a space in the album to accommodate some of those. So, whoops, I dropped my box cutter. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the measurements. So the flaps, you're gonna need two of them, one for the front and one for the back. These are four and a quarter, four and a quarter by eight and seven eighths. Four and a quarter by eight and seven eighths, you need two. You're gonna need two of these, they're gonna be the pocket. They're six and five eight inches across by nine and seven eighths inch tall. And I um, made them a little bit smaller than the nine by nine frame so that they wouldn't uh, stick out past the album. So because this is gonna be a pocket, I want this surface to all be on the same level. So I'm going to add a piece of cardstock here that levels everything so that when you're sticking something in, it doesn't get hung up here. So I'm just gonna cut, trim down a piece of paper that will fit inside Sorry. And when I say inside, I'm going to cover, since this comes over part of this white, I'm going to overlap all the way out to here. Okay, so that should be the right height, roughly, and it is. And I want it to come out to about there. So when I put this in, it's going to be smooth transition down into the pocket. And we want to butt it up as close as possible to this, so there's so the paper doesn't want to jump uh, jump under it or try to get. It'll smoothly transition over it. Remember, none of this is going to show. This is just that so that nothing gets hung up when you're putting it in or pulling it out of the pocket. A little bit of glue there. Okay, so that's in. So we're gonna add this pocket. Make sure you're gonna steer clear of the, um, the hinge area. And then in this case, I'm gonna actually use glue on the bottom. Um, flange, I've got tape on the side, but I'm gonna use glue on the bottom. And that's also because sometimes when you're sticking something in the pocket, it gets hung up right here because it gets between the paper and then runs into your tape, which remains sticky. So I'm just gonna do glue here, which is not something I typically do, just heads up. I should turn it sideways so I can see both edges and it's not placed right. So I'm centering it top to bottom. And it looks about right. Okay, there we go. Give that a second to dry. Here's our flap. That's just some notes I had. I was trying to calculate some measurements. Not important to you. Oh, it's too short. I did for, oh, it's too short. This needs to be I do eight and seven eighths? No, this is eight and a half, sorry. That one's, that one's not right. I had two, is this one right? Yeah, this one's right. So the measurements I gave you were correct. That one was trimmed wrong. Sorry about that, that was confusing. So again, this is four and a quarter inches wide by eight and seven eighths tall. And it's going to be the flap that goes right here.
Sorry, I need to turn it sideways. I just can't see enough. Okay. Now we're ready for our magnet. I'm going to draw a quick reference line. So we just know that the magnet needs to be above that line. That's the edge of the flap that's coming down. And we're going to repeat this on the back. Okay, and I have to trim out a piece of paper, so I'm not going to do it right this second. While we're here, let's go ahead and add some decorative paper. So this is from the Patterns Pack. It's going to go down here, like so. I think it's very pretty. So we need to take this off and add some glue. The whole collection is really very pretty. And I know Stamperia often has like these really large images on in their 12 by 12 collection that sometimes are hard to cut around and with the backgrounds you just don't have that um, which is nice um, so I'm not having to make a choice about whether or not I'm cutting through some large uh, pretty image on the backgrounds it just man I'm having a hard time with my glue today drying too fast on me. Let's try that again. Much better. We bueno. Lovely, lovely. Okay, now we're going to do some color blocking. I know you guys love color blocking. I really don't know that, but I do. I'm gonna use this on the edge of the flap, which I think is really pretty. And then I've got this to go, to pull this pattern back in. So this is what we're looking at here. And it looks like, <sighs> I have to think about this. I'm pretty sure this came from the patterns pack as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down, then we're going to trim this one to fit. And before I do that, i got to double check and make sure none of my pencil marks are going to be in my color block area. If so, I'm just going to erase them. It looks like I lucked out. Sure, let's go ahead and erase it. I don't think it's going to show, but okay. Now I can trim this down to fit. So our options are to color block or to just butt it straight against. I kind of like it both ways. What do you guys think? Um, I think I am going to stick with the color blocking. So I'm going to use my pencil to mark my positions and then trim it by hand. I have a rota trim now and um, I really like it. Sorry for the top of my head, but you can't get little pieces in it. Um, you still need a trimmer that will do little pieces or or you need to be comfortable with um, you know, having a ruler and doing it by hand, which I'm fine with. I've done it enough. Although you guys saw me mess it up a few minutes ago, it does happen. Let's see how we did. I'll take it. So let's make sure it's kind of going in the same direction. 
Is it? It goes this way. Now we'll still need to line it, but let's go ahead and scoot over to the back page. Let's get our pocket in. And once again, this is six and five eighths across by nine and seven eight inches tall. Oh, we still need to put um, our leveling piece here. So let's do that real quick. Now we can add a pocket. Again, I'm adding glue to the bottom flange. And I'm gonna turn it so that I can center it top to bottom. Oops, I almost did that wrong. <laughs> it needs to go this way toward the spine. Where's my... Eight and seven eighths. No, by is that right? Let's let's check. I'll just measure it right off the pocket. Yes, eight and seven eighths. Okay, we're gonna do a quick score on the four and a quarter inch side. Okay, once again, I'm gonna turn it. I know I'm bumping the camera, but I just can't avoid it. I don't have enough workspace front to back. And if I try to extend my camera out anymore, it just keeps tipping over. So I'm just out of space. I'm space challenged. Okay.
good grief. Same drill. I was just turning it right side up again, so there's the front. Okay, beautiful. Shoot, you guys watch me do that? You didn't yell at me? We've got our magnets. I'm gonna have to let that uh, calm down for a second and then add our magnets. set that aside. We can go ahead and glue this designer paper down if I can get that to stop sticking to me. Sorry, a lot of, that's, um, that's the shop. So that's good news. That means you guys are buying and we're selling and that's, that's good news for us and this channel. Usually I have my headphones in so you guys don't hear it. <sighs> okay, some extra scratching for those of you that love that sound. Since I had to do this twice. <laughs> okay, let's burnish this. And then now we can go ahead and place the second magnet. There we go. Let's press that into place nice and secure. And we're ready to separate our flap. Same thing, we're gonna put this piece in first and we're gonna um, color block the second piece. I knew when I trimmed these off, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna use that on something, on a, the edge of a flap or something. So this, this worked out beautifully. Okay, now we're ready to take this piece, get my drink out of the way before I spill it, and uh, trim it down to fit exactly. It's important when you're color blocking to, um, to test it and trim it, um, just in case any piece didn't go in perfectly straight. This is your chance to visually straighten it out. Even if you cut a slant, it'll look, it'll appear straight again. Let's see if I can get this in my trimmer. No, it's too small. Definitely have to use the uh, the ruler. So one of the things I like to try to do if I can when I'm using my ruler to trim is to put the trim on the outside and what I'm trying to save on the inside. So in the event my trimming efforts go awry and I come off my line, I'm not cutting into the piece of paper that I'm trying to place. I'm cutting um, what is intended to be scrap. Hopefully that makes sense. It doesn't always work out that way because sometimes it's just so thin, you don't get a choice. Let's see how we did. Go this way. I'd say we're right on. I'm happy. 
Okay, after this, I'm gonna take a break. We're gonna find, and when I say we, that's the royal we, meaning me. <laughs> I'm gonna find what we're gonna line the pocket with, the back of the pocket and the back side of the flap. And then we'll, we'll have finished all but the embellishment of the, of the cover, okay? So when I come back, we will take care of this inside part. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay, I found the papers and I've got them trimmed out. So these are gonna go in really quick. Um, this is the back sheet of the backgrounds. Okay, and they're gonna go just like so. adhesive on here from taking it out of the Stamperia pack. I, I can work on getting that off later. It's kind of a rubbery adhesive, just a pair of tweezers and I'll come through and clean that up. Okay, and then this is going to get slightly tucked into the pocket. And when I say slightly, I mean slightly because um, I really didn't want to uh, use any more paper than I had to. So I think it's just barely an eighth of an inch. I was trying to cover both uh, the front and back flap and pocket liner with um, one 12 by 12 cut in half, but I couldn't do it. Could not do it, there was too much, too much space. There we go. That needs to come down ever so slightly. Yeah, and my paper must be really thirsty today because it's not giving me any slide time. So I'm going to do that one more time. <laughs> if I can. Let me get it a little closer to... There we go. That's the right height. That's the right margin. Now I'm just going to take a tool and tuck it in the pocket. My spatula tool. Shoot. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Oh my gosh, I panicked. I thought I had put it in upside down. I thought the words were upside down. <laughs> They're not after all that trouble. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna repeat that process over here. Okay. Just 
good. All right. Okay, so the front and back and inside liners are pretty much done. We'll do some embellishing here. And then, oh, I forgot a piece of tape here. And then um, I'm going to probably hang some charms off the back that I haven't decided yet. But if I do, I'm going to mask it. Um, I mean, you could poke it through the, the paper before you apply it, but I think I'm going to mask it with something else, um, either a cutout or a piece of chipboard or maybe even a piece of filigree. We'll have to see. The challenge with doing charms on these, on this one is uh, the charms are silver, which I think are right for the album, but I don't have any, um, that's the wrong one. I always have something in here that's about the right height of the book. Um, I don't have any silver chain at the moment, so I'm gonna hold off on that, see if I can't locate some. And then we'll do something. And if nothing else, I'm definitely going to put like a bow or something. It can't be too bulky because it's going to go in a box. But I think I can manage something um, that'll look nice and romantic on the spine. But most of the dimensional um, embellishments will go on the cover of the box. Okay, I'll be back soon. Hey, everyone. It's Daphne. So we're ready to finish up the cover and add our pages. And I just opened it and realized I don't have my tape in it. So let's do that real quick. And we're going to add our pages. And uh, yeah, so we're moving right along. Okay, sorry I didn't have that done already. I know that's pretty boring to watch. All right. As uh, most of you know, I totally struggled with page eight because I... I glued everything in upside down. So I'm gonna do my best not to make that mistake again. So there's page eight and there's page one. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five. I love this page. Six, seven, nope, six, seven, and then eight. There we go. So we have, oh, I didn't even realize I did that. We have this large um, framed, card topper on the front and on the back page, page one and page eight. This is just a little bit bigger than an eight by eight, but it seems like I'm having a, a hard time with real estate on my desk. Okay, page one. So, let's go. Oh, that feels extremely stiff. Sometimes it's easier to get over the hinge if you open uh, your flaps. I'm gonna try without first. Try it again. And then of course the last option is to miter your corners, which I don't like to do just because I'm lazy. And you can usually get it, get it on without it. 
There you go. And I did. And that looks pretty straight to me. Page one, two, page three. I'm going to take uh, these elements out. This one's a little harder because I've got I'm dealing with dimension on one side. It's funny every time I say that word, I, the other word goes through my mind also. The other D word. Wow, it's so slippery, I can't get it. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> that is weird. It just does not want to let go. That was tight. Wow. I guess this page isn't going anywhere. <clears throat> This is so cute. I hope you do too. I think I just made my hinge a little too tight. Um, it's working, but um, I don't think I gave myself enough room. <clears throat> but we're almost there.
Okay. It's our last page. Okay, so for the cover, I made this. It was cut out of the center of one of the 12 by 12s. And then I was playing around with the idea of adding just a pinch of silver here. Now this is from the Graphic 45 die that goes around the clock. And I really like it. So I'm just gonna put this little bit of bling here in the corner and then add the bride and groom. And I'm trying to keep things um, reasonably fat, flat, because this is all gonna go in a box. <clears throat> It'll take me longer to get the glue on here than anything else. I'm only gonna glue like the corner, because then I'm gonna add this on top of it, so. Uh, it would be ideal to um, have this cut on like a adhesive paper but my goodness, I had to run this through several times just to get a good clean cut on the cardstock by itself. So yeah, I don't know that it would have been able to perform otherwise. Okay. I like it, and you know what? It's just, just a little bit. I like that it's off-center, actually. And this is going to go down. Like so. Let that dry. And then I think I'm going to put a bow down here on the bottom. And this is going to be a multi-loop bow, bow, maybe three loops. This is, um, it's a nice ribbon. It's pretty uh, firm, so it has a lot of body. time. I need my bow maker and I'm too lazy to get it out. <laughs> so, I have another plan. Plan B. Just gonna tie this in a knot. I need a third hand.
So I'm going to fluff that up a little. And then, tuck that under, I don't like it. And then I'm probably going to put a little piece of chipboard, like a heart or something, or a butterfly on top. Let's see what I can find. I've got a small heart that I like. Nope, I don't like it. You know what would go here too is a charm. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and put it down. I actually like it better up here. So I'm gonna put it actually up here. I'm gonna let it dry and then I am going to find a charm to put on the top. And then I'll fuss with my, um, the ribbon splay uh, after it's completely dry, because I'm sure I'll have to move it around a few times. Probably gonna cut off these excess tails, but after it's dry. So, next thing I gotta do, oh, here they are, actually, I found them. I was gonna say I gotta find my, my charms, but here they are. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I think it's the right scale. So I think I'm just going to tuck it under just like so. So it's going to get glued down ever so slightly under the bow. And bows can be tricky because they don't want to stick. So you have to use a lot of glue and then just leave it alone. It's the leaving it alone part I have trouble with. Okay, I'm going to leave everything alone. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, so next time we get together, I'll be doing the walkthrough, and then um, shortly after that, I'll get the, uh, the box done. And I think I'll add those corners. I was going back and forth about whether or not I wanted them on the box or the album. I kinda like them on the album. I might have to see if I've got some more in my stash. I don't have a lot of silver, but this collection calls for silver. Now we've got silver going this way and silver going this way, so I think it creates just the right amount of balance. All right, I'll see you guys soon.